If your government is gonna be toppled by a 16 year old girl who could lose a dream, you got bigger problems. I'm sorry, it makes sense, don't think about it. Real quickly, I am going to Montreal. I am performing at Montreal Sketch Fest. Tickets are in the description below. Come and hang out. Oh, that's it, that's it. That's the end of the self-promo, I swear oh, to God. Oh, hi, hello, how are you? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Carly and let's just get into it. I just took my medication. We've got like a 30 minute window before I start making sense. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like we really need to ride the wave of insanity before I feel balanced again. And that's my gift to you. So we are going to talk about this week the the piece of cinema that shaped society as we know it kind of like our modern day citizen kane it deserves oscars it's literally the worst movie i've ever seen in my entire fucking life and that is divergent divergent is teen ya dystopian series that really came out riding the coattails as, as much as physically possible from the hunger games and even really comparing this to the hunger games is offensive because it's like what if we got chat gbt to write a dystopian series. This series is endlessly confusing, somehow boring also, and it's just about nothing. Nothing happens. No, like everything happens, but nothing happens. The stakes have never been lower and yet so high. I watched this last night and laughed the entire way through it. It was, I genuinely had such a good time and I took notes. So that's what I'm gonna be reading here because I need you to understand my pain, my confusion, and you don't need to watch this movie, but I wanna help you enjoy it to the height of my ability. Hi, I thought thought we'd just take a quick break from this week's video and talk about today's sponsor, Native. I'm so excited to be working with Native. I truly, I use it every day. I've been using Native deodorants for like three years. Um, I swear by them. I'm obsessed with them. Native has plastic free deodorant. So their packaging is 100% plastic free. It's literally just the same formula as their regular deodorant. But this time it's earth friendly with more sustainable packaging. So you get that same native deodorant that's aluminum free, paraben free, vegan and cruelty free. It's not sticky, feels nice and dry when you apply it, but with recyclable packaging and you save 37 grams of single use plastic when you purchase Native's plastic free deodorant instead of the classic packaging. Native is also a proud partner of 1% for the planet. So 1% of all sales on their plastic free deodorant will go to environmental nonprofits. So the scents I have are lavender rose, cucumber and mint, and cotton and lily. This is the one that I've been using right now. This is from their sensitive line. So their sensitive line is made without baking soda. It's also vegan, which you'll love to see. Instead, it's made with coconut oil and magnesium oxide, provides 72 hours of protection. All of these offer 72 hours of protection. I truly do not ever smell bad. And that's my number one fear. I have been a cucumber and mint girly for the majority of my life, very sweet fruit. Fruity is the wrong word, but it's very sweet, very fresh, very clean. This is like a damn basket of laundry that you want to fall into. I'm mean, your favorite comforter. I love this. And it's so like not smelly. You know what I mean? It's like they don't even know that you're wearing a deodorant. So if you want to hop on the native train and I honestly suggest you do, I've been using their products for years. What are you waiting for? You know what I mean? Go to the link in my description and use the code uncarly2 to get 20% off your first native order. Again, go to the link in my description below, use the code uncarly2 and get 20% off your first order from Native. Thank you Native so much for sponsoring this video and for making sick deodorant. Um, let's get back into it. So Divergent follows Beatrice or Tris Pryor. She is played by Shailene Woodley, AKA Hazel Grace Lancaster in the flesh. She has a brother played by Ansel Elgort. Um, So there's layers to this already. All There's a lot going on here. What I will say is that it's deeply funny to be love interests in one movie and brother and sister in the other. That's the level of siblings or dating I demand from my casting agents. This takes place in a post-apocalyptic Chicago. There's a giant electric fence basically also that's guarded by the army that traps them all in Chicago because the war happened. The place outside of Chicago 
it never recovered from the war. So nothing is out there. So we don't go out there. And everyone's trapped in Chicago. And also everyone is white besides Zoe Kravitz. It's the whitest movie in the world. Oh, okay. So sometimes a post-apocalyptic Chicago, which is a fairly diverse city, is just full of Miles Teller and Ansa Elgort. You can't be casting those two in the same movie. That's the same guy, different font. But scary. We're in Chicago. Oh, we're trapped. Because of this war that we don't really get any clarity on to stop the fighting every person in this society is sorted into factions it's kind of like what if harry potter's sorting hat ran the government you know what i mean what if a buzzfeed quiz was government distributed so at the age of 16 all the 16 year olds like take a test which tells them what faction they're in and then the next day they have a big sorting ceremony literally harry potter course sorting hat found dead in a ditch where they decide what faction they go into if you go into a faction that's different than your parents, you can never see them again and you can never go home. This is such a flawed, <laughs> obviously it's a bad story. This is such a flawed system. I don't understand why anyone would do it. You can't ever see your friends and family again. And we're going to get into this later. Once you decide to go to a faction, there's a certain level of hazing that basically happens. You know, it's sorority, fraternity, Greek life. But instead of fucking a goat, you have to like jump off a building and some shit. If you fail those tests you become factionless and you get kicked out and you become effectively homeless this movie has some crazy anti-homeless rhetoric for no for no reason it's just like half the time characters are like oh no if i fail this i'll be factionless and i'd literally rather be dead and you're like is that the pov that's a pov of divergent the factions are abnegation which is what tris and her brother are in they are the selfless they all dress in gray. They eat a plant-based diet of no sauces and spice because apparently spice and enjoying life in general, that's selfish. They don't look in mirrors. They take care and feed the homeless or the factionless and they run the government. Then there's erudite. They dress in blue and they're like smart and logical. So if you go here, you're basically like in a university. Like it seems like people are just doing research and shit. Candor values honesty. They run the law and like all the judicial system and they dress in black and white. The way I would would never <laughs> transfer. I don't, some of these, I just don't understand the appeal at all. You can go to university or you can join this faction where your feelings get hurt every day because people tell the truth. Then there's Amnity. They're the peaceful and kind and they run the farms and they just seem high as fuck chilling out all day. If I was existing in Divergent Universe, the way I'd be picking this one. You can either never taste a spice again, have your feelings hurt, under the guise of honesty, or you can like vibe out on a farm with everyone who's kind. I don't know. And then finally, there's Dauntless. They're the brave and they're the cops and the soldiers. This movie kind of interprets being brave as being rowdy and loud. Anytime Dauntless arrive anywhere, they're jumping off of trains. It's the only way they get around is they jump outside of moving trains, do random parkour, sprint everywhere, and they're like, yeah, woo! This seems like a terrifying universe because that means that at any given moment, a giant group of 25 cops, basically, soldiers and cops, are just doing parkour through the streets, screaming at people. That's terrifying. It's worth noting that you have to make this decision at 16, which truly makes no fucking sense to me because every 16 year old is going to do the dumbest shit possible. There's a million different ways this could get fucked up. In Harry Potter, it's like they're 11 and your house just kind of depends on your dorm room and your friends. It's not like this is your job, by the way. You're 15 and you've got to leave your family and you're going to get a job or you become factionless. So make, make a choice. You know what I mean? So before the choosing day, Beatrice, who is by the way, nothing. I feel I feel like I've really figured out why The Hunger Games works and this doesn't besides general good writing and a vision. And it's because Katniss, for all of her flaws, is a compelling character. Triss is truly what I imagine it to be like if a loaf of Wonder Bread were a protagonist. There's nothing behind the eyes there. Like there's just nothing there. She's just deeply unaffected by everything and kind of just stares. She's constantly like, 
That's like what she does in this movie. It's fucking crazy. Her and her brother, Caleb, go to do the test, which is where they basically inject you with a serum. You hallucinate and you do this little test and then your results tell you what faction you should choose. Tris basically lucid dreams. She can tell that the hallucination isn't real. So she just kind of like life hacks it. Then the woman administering the test is like, you've got to get the fuck out of here. You're divergent. And the government, for some reason, which is never explained, hates divergence and I, I entered your test results as abnegation but it said that you could be erudite abnegation or dauntless and you've just got to get out of here like why is a teenager basically having the ability to lucid dream a threat to the system in any way i couldn't tell you i couldn't tell you maybe just build a better test that people can't tell it is never explained why divergence are in any way a threat to society also they have this test but you can just pick whichever one you want so what's the fuck what's the point also this is why everyone in Gen Z is fucked up. It's like every single book we read is somebody being like, you're special. You're different. And being different and special is the only way your life matters, by the way. So then they go to the fucking sorting ceremony. Triss's parents work in the government at abnegation since abnegation does the government the big president of chicago's name is marcus there's something about the hunger games that really works or all of these dystopian kind of things of like give people weird names so it feels like fantasy you do not tell me that man is named marcus and the big antagonist from erudite who wants to overthrow the government her name's janine that's right evil janine everyone just has like a normal name it's like caleb Al, the only person who's got a weird name is the lo is the love interest, and his name is Four. You can't. D ah, 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 ah. Caleb chooses erudite, and Triss chooses Dauntless. Why the fuck would you choose Dauntless? Why would you choose why? But why the fuck would you choose Dauntless? And you choose to be a cop? Why? <laughs> they just don't do a good enough job of making it seem in any way worth it. I just don't understand why the fuck you would choose that. You can low-key die in like the hazing for Dauntless. In ev like they're like, jump down that hole, jump off this train, fight each other to the death, throw knives at each other. You can die in a big way. And I'd be kicking myself if I'm doing fucking war training when I could be learning how to propagate plants. So then she leaves with Dauntless and starts training. Again, the way that these people travel is truly just jumping onto subways who's driving the subways we'll literally never know well no, there's no explanation as who's driving the subway why there's like no doors and they have to jump on them like why can't the subway just stop can the other factions take the subway as well but do they have to like jump also like what if you have mobility issues so then they have to jump off the subway and she's like whoa she also meets christina played by zoe kravitz who's also training to be a dauntless with her whatever the first test is they have to jump through this hole in a roof they're all in a roof and eric who's in charge why is your name fucking eric name any other don't give it a, <laughs> i don't want a regular name <laughs> i want it to be like my name's blade that makes sense to me but they're basically like jump down this hole who's gonna go first and tris is like me because she rightfully assumes that like they're not gonna just like make all of their pledges kill themselves on the first day they're not gonna make every single person that they need to make the army happen murder themselves on the first day she gets caught in a net which is great and she meets four who's helping training the dauntless pledges whatever she renames herself tris tris is supposed to be 16 this is four he's canonically 18 years old which fuck off with that shit it makes no sense he's supposed to be 18 he was the top of his class and they have apparently tapped him for leadership twice which means that they wanted a 17 year old to be working in the government which is awesome then training starts and it's 10 weeks it's important to note this because she's gonna fall in love with four and they're gonna have a pretty intense relationship and it's gonna happen over the course of 10 weeks basically this happens over the course of two months i want you to remember that so it seems crazier because where this is going to end is one of them pointing a gun at the other one that's happening in two months so just you should be prepared for that the first five weeks are physical training meaning they're getting them into physical shape to be a cop slash soldier the military is good we need more of it and you should want to do it then the next five weeks is mental so they basically put the serum in you again so you hallucinate and you learn to face your biggest fears when we're starting with the physical challenge tris is just getting her ass fucking handed to her over and over again they start doing just like fights like hand-to-hand -hand combat and she gets thrown to the ground immediately every time because she's maybe 100 pounds soaking wet by the way if you're in the bottom half of your class you just get kicked out of the faction and you have to be homeless she's friends with zoe kravitz and two white men that are truly interchangeable i could not tell i could could not I could not tell you who's who they get tattoos and she gets this fucking tattoo this Demi Lovato tattoo so she starts because Tris is at the bottom half of her class and she doesn't want to be kicked to the streets 
She starts training at night to get more physically commanding. This is when Four starts to help her. He's not nice. He's still not nice to her. He's still like, shut the fuck up. But he's helping her get physically stronger. And this is good because it's like somebody should show a little bit of empathy towards the children that are basically fighting for their lives. Then they do knife throwing. One of Triss's friends drops his knife. Also like, do you get trained in knife throwing in cop school in the army? Why do you need to know how to throw knives? Like surely everyone's using guns. They're throwing knives and one of Triss's friends, he like fucks up his throw and he drops it. So then one of the teachers is like, go pick it up while everyone else is throwing knives. And as somebody who did archery at sleepaway camp, you know that that's not safe. He's gonna get a knife in his body. And Triss is like, hey, that's fucked up. Which again, this makes no fucking sense. If the value of this action is bravery. Is it not brave to stand up to somebody in charge? That's brave. She should be valued for that. But instead he goes, okay, now you go stand at that target and Four's gonna throw knives at you. So Four throws knives around her body, like cuts her ear. And she's like, why did you cut me? And he's like, Eric wasn't gonna let you off unless I cut you a little bit. And that's romantic when he cuts you just a little bit with the knife because society is broken. Then they do more hand-to-hand -hand combat. She has to fight Miles Teller, Top Gun's very own. He fucking destroys her, because <laughs> fucking obviously. He's also kind of like a racist, misogynist. He's like the villain in this, but like he has probably like nine lines of dialogue total and they're all like slur adjacent. He calls her a stiff, which is the made up slur in this universe for abnegation because they're stiff because they feed the homeless and that's bad and that's bad that's lame and people hate that and then he destroys her he basically cracks her head open in the wrestling ring she passes out for a day and then when she wakes up her friends are like oh we're gonna go play capture the flag and that's our final test you shouldn't come because you're in the fucking infirmary but if you don't come you will fail so Trista's is obviously like i gotta go play capture the flag which by the way is this what army training is hand-to-hand -hand combat capture the flag knife throwing jumping in a hole that's what it is to be in the army she helps them win the capture the flag it's incredibly boring and a useless scene i just want you to know because she helps them win capture the flag she then rises in the rankings enough to not be cut off. Now they're doing the mental training. So they go in and they practice and you go into your fear landscape, which is like you basically are hallucinating and you're in your top three fears. Triss is, is a lot of like drowning and birds attacking her. And she's able to slate, like she kills it in this because she's divergent. She knows she's lucid dreaming. So she's like, oh, I'll just leave. It's not real. And Four sees this because he's helping her train using the serum. And he's like, if you get too good, they will kill you, which again, why there's just one woman who works at like the tattoo parlor and she's like yo my brother was divergent he was like you he got really good during the mental tests and then the president looked in on his test and the next day they found him thrown off a building there's just no exposition as to why this is a threat in any way because it doesn't really seem like the government is that challenged if your government is going to be toppled by a 16 year old girl who could lucid dream you got bigger problems I'm sorry, because Four realizes that Triss is divergent and he's also divergent. He starts helping her. They go into his fear landscape and he teaches her how to solve them like a dauntless. So instead of being like, oh, I'm lucid dreaming, it's like, you've got to figure out how to face the fear. And this is when he starts being nice to her, basically. It's like an hour and 45 minutes into this two and a half hour movie, which also, why is this movie two and a half hours? What happened to a 90 minute beautiful film? And it's important to note that this movie is definitely targeted at, you know, teenage girls, tween girls, and I think teaching them the truth that men, if they're mean to you for a really long time and then they start being nice to you because they think you're different, that's okay and you should fall in love with them because that's true. So Erudite wants to overthrow the government that's run by abnegation and in, in doing so, Erudite is spreading a rumor that the president Marcus mistreated his son and that's why his son left abnegation. Triss goes into Four's mind landscape and finds out that Marcus is his father and he left because Marcus is an abuser. What? Oh my God. She finds out that he's been abused and he carries a lot of trauma. This is really um, not explored. She goes to visit her brother. She's like, oh no, I'm worried about mom and dad because the government's gonna be overthrown. There's like nine plot lines in this movie. None of them really matter. And her brother's like, now that he's an erudite, he's like, actually abnegation is bad and an erudite is good. She goes home and because she's like killing it and slaying it and like the mental challenges, the other guys start getting jealous. So the two white boys who are her friends, one of them gets really jealous because he's not good at facing his mental fears. The choice he makes, instead of kind of like reckoning with that, trying to improve himself, he tries to kidnap and throw her off a building. He tries to murder her. Four is there and saves her. She's rightfully traumatized by this. It's 
fucked and force like you're getting good that's why they're jealous it's like that doesn't make it any better i just almost got murdered literally less than 12 hours after he tried to push her off a building and kill her the white guy is like i'm so sorry will you forgive me first of all let her cool off for a bit you're coming hot and fast on the regret. Give her a minute. Obviously, Tris says no. So he kills himself. He jumps off a bridge. Why? This is my theory that this book is somehow written by somebody who is secretly incredibly alt-right. The moral of this book seems to be women need to heal men and anticipate their needs or they will die. <laughs> Anyways, Tris does her test. She passes with flying colors. She does it the dauntless way, not the divergent way. So she's all good. It's all good, baby. Everyone's having a good time. Then right after they pass, they get injected with a serum and they're like, this is because you're a soldier, whatever. They all go to bed and then they get woken up in the middle of the night night because the serum is like a mind control serum and it's making all of the dauntless soldiers basically just like get up and get ready for war but if you're divergent the serum doesn't work on you so tris has to pretend why, why are they being mind controlled great question it's because erudite is taking over the government so they want dauntless to do a genocide against the abnegation it's awesome and, and it makes sense it makes sense don't think about it so basically all the dauntless are rounding up all the abnegation to shoot them in the head and kill them tris and four break free and get separated four gets taken back to dauntless headquarters tris finds her family and her brother who now realizes he's been wrong for believing erudite's lies and they go because they've got to get into the dauntless headquarters to turn off the fucking serum while this is happening at a certain point she finds out that her mom who this whole time has been a boring mom lady moms are boring and once you become a mother your life basically ends that's the pov of this before she was in abnegation she was in dauntless so she grabs a gun she starts gunning everyone down it's honestly the best part of the movie it comes in 15 minutes left of the movie a savior a, a shining light gunning down everyone it's awesome she dies she gets shot her dad also get shot but they break in she's with marcus and her brother four is being mind controlled and tries to kill tris he's holding a gun against her head like this because janine is evil and making him do it and she just goes it's okay i love you it's okay i love you i love you it's okay it's okay gun at her head she's stronger than i am i'd be like fuck you fuck you fuck you because she says i love you she heals his trauma he breaks free of the mind control <laughs> women are actually supposed to rehabilitate damaged men you're supposed to heal them that's kind of your job her and four take take Janine down. They put mind control serum in her neck and she turns off the serum so that no more Dauntless murder. Then they all get on a train to leave and Four helps his abusive father. His abusive father is there like, help me on the train and Four's like, okay. So that's the end of that storyline. The key to surviving abuse is forgiveness at any and all costs. That's Divergent, baby. That's basically the movie. It's horrible. Thank you so much for watching this video. You can follow my Instagram, all that fun stuff in the description below. I'll see you soon. Bye.